This is Grilled, the Staff Canteen podcast for chefs. My name is Cara Houchin, editor of the Staff Canteen, and in this episode we speak to Brad Carter. Our deputy editor, Tani Dawn Hiscox, caught up with Brad, who strongly believes his team should be eating food of the same quality as his guests. He documents staff tea on his Instagram stories, and it's been so popular he's published a book sharing the recipes. Yeah, thanks for, um, thanks for sending the book over. I'm yeah, no worries. Have a look, it's really cool. Thank you. It's um, which I I wanted to um, the point of the book obviously is um, the staff meals. Um, the publisher originally came to me to do my um, my restaurant book, but because yeah. I'm because I'm still quite a young chef, it's like I'm I still feel like I'm evolving all the time. So I didn't want to do my end of days coffee table book yet. I don't think I've finished evolving yet. Um, yeah, there's, there's I've, I've some... always. Yeah, I've always pretense said, in doing something like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've said I've always wanted to do that last, like the greatest shit. So in my end, three, three, three albums, um, and then I'll reference the prodigy. So it's like um, experience, that's staff. Then I'll be doing Fat of the Land, um, and then I'll be doing music for the Guilty Generation, the last one. <laughs> so it's okay. like, uh, it's a, a complete... Um, it's a complete um, album sort of music style, like, uh, inspiration. Um, so the staff one, obviously, it, it felt like right here and now, and I had to convince him, the publisher. So he wasn't in, he didn't know about this Instagram stories and the quality of the staff food. So when he asked me to do the book about the restaurant, he's eaten here a few times. I said, no, no, I don't want to do that yet. I want to do that um, later on. I said, but I do want to do my staff food. I think, yeah. I think it's more accessible. It's a home cookbook with a difference. Um, more functional than a restaurant book. People will actually use it. Um, and I, talk, I, I spoke to him about it. He's like, nah, I, can't, I don't think it'll sell chicken and chips and stuff like that. I said, that's what people eat, yeah. But because yeah. he's, he's, um, cause he's a photographer as well, he'd seen that in restaurants. And I said, no, yeah. no, as he's, we carry the, he does the restaurant through, so we eat as well as the guests, but in a different, cheaper cut and whatnot. And then I, I shown him, and he was like, this is amazing. So, we we hit the hit the ground and it uh, took three months start to finish because it was already in my head basically the concept I wanted it to be magazine like so every page was different um, I wanted um, every time you looked at it I wanted the story to be very choppy and changing so like it wasn't boring and weighed you down when you read it like you're reading my whole life story like I'm dead so I wanted to basically give people a little snapshot and make it funny and like I've written it and which I have written it. Um, and then um, it was the, the the idea was to um, make it yeah, just like um, like every page more exciting and every page different and, and celebrate Birmingham. All the creatives that I know who are some of them under the radar, some of them well known, and um, celebrate the, the best the best of Birmingham really. And most of them are my friends. Um, the 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 other restaurants and stuff that are in it, and uh, the pudding guy and um, the the Asian guy. They're all really good friends and they have their own businesses. But they last year they came in. I asked them all to come and do a guest staff lunch. So they came in to cook for the staff. We did a week of it, and uh, they came in and uh, the, the dishes that are in there that are from them are the ones that they come and cook for the staff. Um, so it was like we. I tried to get like a snapshot of of Instagram and and the time and the place of of that happening without it being dated and Instagram like. So. People who, who follow it and love it religiously, which is a lot, um, you know. And also, we get we get about two thousand people a day watch it, and um, get a lot of messages. And um, people just asking me, when you're going to do a book? When you're going to do a book? So it's, it's basically like you know, they want it, we do it sort of thing as well. I wanted to, it's a you know, home cooked book. There's a saturated market, and it's yeah, you, it can be like you know, the chef on the front holding a tray of on the tray of um, cottage pie, it's lovely, and obviously it's going to be nice because that chef's obviously good, but at the same time, there's a million of them. And this is, you know, food that everyone wants to eat, and and uh, it's uh, everyone can actually make it as well. You know, there's a fish finger sandwich in there, so <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's so, enough to be getting on with. So the whole book is really, it's, it's you know, part autobiography and a diary and scrapbook, and it's interwoven with all of these stories. Yeah, yeah, Which I exactly, think is, yeah. is 
is part of the appeal that it's, it's, it's that it's not just about the food; it's about the relationships. So it's like it's not a classic cookbook in in style. Is that what you'd like to do with your next two as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The next one will be just be an evolution of this, and I already know what it's going to be. Uh, but I've, yeah. got to, I've got to sell a lot of these ones first, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and then the last one will be like you know everything in the kitchen sink sort of thing. You know, like yeah. all, all the dishes from Carter's and and whatnot. But you know, this one is um, it's really celebrating like uh, what what we've achieved here, who the people who work here, and the things that we go through every day, and it all leads up to that you know that family meal that's really important before before dinner and we um i always wanted to implement i i worked in restaurants where you know you don't get that you get a bowl of rice and a different sauce each day which is fine you know there's nothing wrong with that that's what people think they should do they should pour their effort into the menu then that's fine but i try hit my restaurant is a, is a culture and a lifestyle they commit you know 95% of their lives to working in the restaurant they choose to work in the staff. Um, and I own the restaurant, so I make sure that it's a nice place for them to be. And uh, if that meal helps and we spend a little bit more money on the meal to make them look forward to it and let them sort of have their own dish and get it on and cook it for staff and get into it, that's a that's an amazing part of, of their day. Um, yeah, and, you know, I I strongly believe that we should we should be eating the same things as the guests because it's our lifestyle as well. We shouldn't be eating, you know, the the the, the crap if if the guests are eating really nice things because we want to be out getting infused about what we serve. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you're, you're not the servant. Clearly, yeah, we want to get infused about the ingredients and cook them in a, in a more of a family style rather than the refinement we do in the restaurant. But then it's you know it's all relative and and like I say it's. It's a lifestyle choice cooking at at, at, um, at this level, and you know it's not you know it's not easy. And any, anything that makes the day really fun and enjoyable, then that's going to be included into uh into into what we do. So so far so good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been it's been really good. I'm just about to be here, there, and everywhere trying to sell them that. So. <laughs> yeah, I was reading the other day how very few people buy cookbooks anymore, and only you know the um, high flyers like the. Jamie Oliver's and stuff. Yeah. Still sell cookbooks, so it's um. I think it's it's a tough gig, but yeah. It is making the... it making it a little bit different and and trying to um. I think it's if I get the idea correctly, it's sort of trying to adapt it to a new generation as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I, I always try and be progressive anyway in my mm. work and what I do, but I think this book is a is a definite like representation of of you you know oh, it's another cookbook but actually even just looking at the front you think this this is intriguing it's not i don't know whether this is a cookbook or not i'm not sure uh and then it's kind of like you know it, un, it unravels itself to be i want it to be you know see i've never had one like this before kind of thing yeah. uh, which is i think we've achieved that with it and it's just getting it out to the you know giving it a voice now and making people know about it would you ever consider opening a restaurant or selling any of the food that's in, in the book? <laughs> that was what people, that's the main question I get asked about this, yeah. this uh, book. Uh, when are you going to do a staff night? One day, I, um, in a couple of months, I am going to do, um, I'm going to do a dinner uh, on a Sunday. I'm going to open the restaurant mm -hmm. and do a roast um, based on the, the recipes out of the book. So it'll be like a, okay. free, a free course sort of staff food uh, at, straight out of the book. Uh, day and probably do like a couple of scenes because everybody asks me when you're going to do this stuff we actually um we actually sometimes clear the the food from the restaurant and say <laughs> how was it and they're like oh how was your kebab you had earlier how was it not <laughs> you know what i mean it's like we yeah. put like hours and weeks into some of the dishes and they're asking about the uh, food but that's the appeal you see that's the accessibility that it is it's, it it brings people together and makes people yeah. see that are oh, you know what maybe Maybe it's not as exclusive as you think it is that the, the restaurant and 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 yeah, it's perhaps you know. a little bit less intimidating. Yeah, and like you know, three years ago it all started. We were like, I was speaking to with Alex, the manager, and and, and Huller, and we we're on about um, we we're on about um, how we're going to fill up the story time uh, on Instagram with content that's ever changing. Because obviously, it's fine just doing products and stuff which we do on the posts, but. 
we wanted something that was fun and like, you know, we we started talking about doing stuff in the kitchen. And then Alex was like, oh, why don't we just, the staff food so amazing, why don't we just take a few snaps of that and it'll be different every day. And we were like, oh, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. So we started doing it um, really, really simply at first, just taking a couple of shots of when it came in and then a finished plate and then one of us eating it. And then loads of people started getting into it and it started to get a mad following. And then we started getting really serious on it, trying to do every step. Um, we even contemplated next, I think we're going to start putting the recipe up as well. Uh, which is a lot more work, but we're, we're going to try and integrate that. And um, yeah, that was where it was. Um, that was where it changed really. It give, give us um, it give us a new, new content every day that was ever changing. But it was actually what was happening right here, right now. So I think that's why people really like it. And for you, it would have been something a little bit light-hearted to exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't want it to be, well. You don't want to come across all serious, serious all the time. And, and, you know, people think, oh, you know, it's just another stuffy listening star restaurant, which it ain't far from me. Great. All right, thanks, Tana. All right, Brad, thank Cheers, you. Cheers, thank you. Speak Bye-bye. soon. We hope you enjoyed this interview, and if you have any comments, feel free to tweet us or comment on the post. Uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download. The next episode is in association with Westlands, and we talk to Dave Wall, head chef of the Unruly Pig in Suffolk, as part of our Chefs to Watch series. And finally, if you like what we do, whether it's our podcast or our videos or even our features, please head over to our Patreon page and support us there.